One of the things we can all do to play better tennis is play smarter, think better. So today I've got a great video from a master professional who's a master professional in the USPTA and the PTR who's going to give you a simple system. Anybody can do this to start playing smarter tennis, which will help you win more matches. And that's where he cap is standing. I actually just interviewed him for TennisCon 4. We were going through 10 big ideas for mental toughness. It was amazing. I, I called him after the interview. I said, you're the Babe Ruth of TennisCon because every year I've been lucky enough, four years in a row, he's done TennisCon. He knocks it out of the park every time. As I was listening to some of the, the things that he was saying to them, like this one, not even the whole video, which was over an hour long, the whole interview, there was one slide he did where I'm like, I would pay 67 bucks just to hear that one thing you just told me. And, and it was more, it was about tennis, but it was also about life. It was awesome. Anyway, this guy's amazing. You should also go to his YouTube channel and smash up his subscribe button because you're going to be smarter if you start listening to Ori Capistani, okay? He's the only USPTA and PTR pro who's one pro of the year in both categories. So he is about as good as it gets. Let's get to his video. Oh, and don't forget to go in the description and get on the alert list for TennisCon 4. Hey everybody, Coach Jorge Capistani here, and thanks for joining us today. I got my rockin' wife, Marty. Uh, so today's little video lesson has to deal with the target areas. Like, are there target areas? What's a good target? What should I be aiming at? So if you follow our teachings, you probably know already, we'll put it real quickly on the screen, that one of our systems is identifying the, the six court areas, okay? The, we call them the six zones. Uh, and I'll just show you that real quickly. In the front part, you have the service box basically cut in half and the closest to the net is zone one. As you back up you have zone two. As you enter no man's land you have zone three and then zone four is the back half of no man's land. And then we even take the area behind the court and call that zone five and then way back by the fence or tarp that would be zone six. So that's one system that we already use and I think it's really helpful for common language for me and my players. But I have another targeting system that we just call the squares, a four square. And I'm gonna show you on the court over there where they are, Marty. Um, on the left short, we're gonna call that one. Uh, left deep is gonna call that two. Slide over right deep is called three. Mm -hmm. And then right short uh, is called four. Okay, so one, two, three, and four. So I think of it as a big giant game of four square. So sometimes tennis players, when they play it, they just think of the big box. But if you can think more in, in smaller areas and kind of try to play to certain patterns, that it could be helpful. So what I want you to do is first we're gonna just, and this is your homework if you're watching, I want you to go ahead and do this drill. You're gonna rattle with Carly, and you're gonna yell out where each one of your shots lands. You're gonna say one, two, three, or four. I'll go with you in the beginning. Here we go. That's four. Okay, no problem. Just get a rally going. And we're just creating awareness here for Marty. That's two. Yep, say it out loud, Marty. That's four. Or three, you're right. That's three again. That's one. That's two. I thought that might have been two. That's definitely two. That's three. That's mm, close. That could have been one. All right, that's two. Let's hold up real good. Good job. So that's the simple part, but this is really a cool drill that I, I'm hoping you'll try because it's helped a lot of my players. So we get, we get some awareness. So the next basic question you want to ask yourself is, where do most players, where do you think you're most comfortable hitting? Well, most rec players prefer to hit to zone two or three. That's basically the, the deep part of the court. But that could be a problem because if you ask pretty much any of your opponents, where would you prefer me to hit, twos and threes or ones and four, what would they say? They want twos and threes because they want to stay back and hit ground strokes. So the very thing that we like to deliver might be what they want. So here's why it's important to have these targets because now you can start thinking in patterns. So what I want you to do, Marty, let's say that you're playing a match and you determine after a while that Carly, low and short in the backhand is no good. 
I'm not saying she isn't, let's just assume that. So now you're gonna be thinking, if you have these targets in your mind, you're gonna set up the play, and when you get the right shot, you're gonna go to that ball intentionally. I do find that a lot of players can go short better when they slice. Some people can hit topspin and hit it short, a lot of people prefer slice, so I'll let you decide that. I personally can do a lot better if I slice. All right, so let's just make an assumption here. Hopefully she's not hearing us. Mm -hmm. You're gonna rally, and when you get the right shot, you're gonna go for zone four and make her hit a short ball, get her off the baseline, and see how she likes that. All right, so viewers that are watching this, this is a great exercise. Uh, you're just gonna get a hitting partner. You're not gonna necessarily tell them what area, but we've kind of determined. So there's Marty, and she got it. So here came Carly up and she hit an approach and played it out. So part of this, Marty, is a two-part deal. You have to have the, the intelligence to kind of do some opponent analysis and know what, you can't just sit there, I don't know, you know, I don't know where they're weaker. You gotta be figuring that stuff out. Then part two is you gotta try to actually do something about it. Forget about what you like and what you like to send. Let's start sending what she doesn't like. And this is a paradigm shift for a lot of rec players, they don't really do that. They really measure themselves based on if I'm hitting it hard, it's going in, then playing great. And that's a really shallow way to look at it, all right? So let's do this. Let's make an assumption that on this next point, you've determined that she's no good with short forehands. All right, so you're gonna be aiming for zone one when you get the right shot. That's the key, when you get the right shot. You have to get an appropriate shot to try it on. Okay, good. Good. Uh, ball behind you, Marty. There it was. So that was a perfect time to try it. Woo, they play it out. And there's balls in the way. There's all kinds of stuff. <laughs> okay, so the last way I want to show you that you can do this is to use square, this four square system, this targeting system, and kind of use it to run some patterns. So a pattern would be this. You might say, okay, I'm going to hit two, 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 and then a four. All right, so you work them deep, 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 and then short. Or you might work them three, 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 deep backhand, deep backhand, and then all of a sudden you get them a short forehand. So you kind of use it as a numbering system. So we hope that helps you. There's a lot of cool things you can do with that. Really take an audit and see where you end up hitting and where you like to hit. It's not about what you want, it's about what they don't like. All right, so hopefully that helps you. Thanks for checking in with us. If you're watching this video anywhere other than our two websites, our coach's website is tennisdrills.tv, and our player's website, which is 100 percent free instruction is jorgecapistani.com. If you're watching this video there, we'd hope that you scroll down, do us a favor, leave us a comment, tell us what you like about the video, what you didn't like. If you have a question or want us to answer a question, you can leave it in the comments below and I promise you we'll read all the comments and I'll respond to your questions there. Huh? Huh? That's what I tell you, the guy is good. I told you the guy's good, right? So make sure you go to Jorge Capistani's YouTube channel. You smash up the subscribe button. I think he is, I mean, he's the best. Every time he does something, I always am impressed. Whether he makes a YouTube video, does a video for TennisCon 4, makes a new course. He's awesome, man. So if you don't know who he is, study up on Jorge. He's great. And uh, that's just one of 40 amazing coaches that we have for TennisCon 4 and all these presentations are coming in now. I'm gathering them all. And what I love about TennisCon 4 is it's like I'm getting to learn from my heroes. So many of the coaches I respect, so many awesome players of the past or legendary coaches, they're part of TennisCon 4, and I'm getting to learn all this stuff. And you can do it along with me. So make sure you go down in the description and you sign up because if you love tennis, you absolutely will love TennisCon 4. I love it every year. It's like I just get filled up with all this information and inspiration, just all this tennis ammunition that I can basically use for the rest of my life to help people get better on the court myself. So I love it, and I hope you love it. And uh, if you love tennis, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as well, Crunch Time Coaching, right here. We're pretty much putting a, a video out every single day on tennis awesomeness. So we'll see you in the next video. And keep on hitting those tennis balls.